Hi, this is Jill from Simple Daily Recipes. Okay, let's pick up where we left off the other day when I made Dr. McDougall's slow-cooked pizza potatoes. Remember that? Okay, and we all talked about how, well, I told you how it kind of turned out mushy, and then we all talked about, you know, doing it in the Instapot. But pressure cooking it instead of slow cooking it? Yeah, okay, so I did that, all right? I had to make another batch of homemade oil-free pasta sauce. Uh, if you haven't seen that video, it's around here somewhere. Look it up, homemade oil-free pasta sauce. Uh, it turned out really well. Once I got that made, it was time to put everything together. This is kind of like a lasagna, really. A, a lasagna cooked, pressure cooked in the Instabot. That's what it really is. Yeah, did you say it? You said it, right? You don't know what I'm talking about. When I do this, <laughs> you need to ask some friends. You're falling behind. Okay, so here's what I did this time. This is not the same exact pizza potato arrangement that I made the other day. I stepped it up a notch. I, this time I thought, I'm going to put some sweet potato in this. And I am so glad I did. And I put one field roast Italian sausage uh, in the batch here. And I just get it all crumbly like that. I ran it through the food processor. There's all my potatoes, which that was probably about four or five medium potatoes. I got a little bit of frozen spinach I'm trying to get rid of. Then I have some fresh spinach. Oh yeah, and then I made some Parmesan, which was half cold raw cashews, half nutritional yeast. And I just blended that in my coffee grinder and got it all to a powdery consistency. And then here's my pizza toppings. I've got sliced onion, some fresh zucchini this time, and uh, one long big old red bell pepper. And I and I, this time I cut everything into thicker chunks. And then here's my homemade oil-free pasta sauce. And it, like I said, if you want to know how to make this, it's in another video. Okay, so you start by putting a layer of pasta sauce on the bottom of the pot and then adding some water to it. Because we're pressure cooking this, we need water to get the steam up, okay? So I have to put that water on the bottom. And then we go a layer of potatoes and then a layer of zucchini. And you know what? There's no right or wrong here. You just get the layers going. Put in the onion and then the red bell pepper. And whatever your favorite toppings are, even your favorite lasagna layer, I mean, just think like that. Think like lasagna and just pile it in. Now, I'll tell you, right here with the sweet potato, uh, I'm going to make, next time, I'm going to make this again because this this rocks. I mean, I love this. This is, this is going to be my new favorite meal, and Charlie liked it too. And this stuff is even better the next day. Oh, my gosh. We ate this for lunch today, and it was so good. I wish there was more left over. Uh, but next time I'm doing like, I'm going to make the bottom all regular potato and then I'm going to make that second layer, layer all sweet potato because that sweet potato in there with the spinach is good. Okay, and you saw me, I put the rest of it in there and I put the crumble on top. And that, that field roast Italian sausage has so much flavor to it that I just wanted it to be on top and I kept it there. And I'm glad that I just made it one layer because it was pretty strong. You know, even with all this in it, I had not met the maximum uh, feel, fill space in my liner pot. So I was still good to go. Okay. So, uh, and then I just set the, I had my settings set to manual, which put it in high pressure. And then here you'll see, I couldn't decide whether I should cook everything for four minutes or maybe I should go with three minutes. Uh, cause I was thinking about the potato and the sweet potato. And then I ended up settling on three minutes and three minutes was fine. Three minutes was perfect. That it still the potato still came out really tender, um, and I think you know I could probably go two minutes and everything would come out tender. I want to say this because the pot was so full and I had an adequate amount of liquid in the pot. I've never experienced this before with the with the InstaPot. It took a while to get the pressure going, more so than anything I've ever cooked, and I know why because I didn't have a lot of room in there. There wasn't a lot of head space in the pot to, to get the pressure going. It took some time. Normally it only takes about, you know, I don't know, five minutes to get the pressure going and then the, the little silver thing, you know, pops up and everything starts cooking and it starts counting. But this time 
I would say that it took the Instapot maybe close to, I don't know, maybe eight to 10 minutes. I don't know. It seemed like it took forever. I didn't count it. I didn't, I didn't have a stopwatch and try to figure out exactly how long, but it, it took a while from it to say on to it till it started actually counting to get the pressure up to start pressure cooking. Okay. So I'm just going to warn you right there. If you're going to do this and you fill this up all the way, nothing's wrong. You might hear some popping, uh, some cracking sounds. That's the pressure and the seal and everything. There's nothing wrong. That's not a, that's not a problem. That's just normal pressure cooking sounds, but it's going to take a little bit, but once the pressure gets up there and you'll hear it, you can even hear the water boiling on the bottom of the pot. It just, there's just not a lot of room in there to get a lot of high pressure going. Okay. But it will happen and it will count and it will start cooking and the three minutes will pass. You can release the pressure and voila, there you go. See, here it is. So it really does work out. Now, something I didn't count on, uh, was so much, uh, liquid on the top of this dish. So I was like, Hmm, how much water is actually in this thing? But there was just some sitting on top, so I got a ladle out, and I just ladled it off the top before I started digging in. Which was easy. I was trying to, you know, just lift the water up without lifting the uh, pasta sauce. Okay, now here's the moment of truth. I'm digging in. It's, it's soupy. I'll tell you that part. There's a lot of liquid in here, but it held up. Mike, I think, Mike, weren't you asking me, or weren't we talking about, well, if we pressure cook it, maybe it would become all jumbled. But look, look, Mike, it stayed in layers. It works. Pressure cooking, it still kept its layers. As soft and tender as the potatoes are, they're still there. Um, a lot of water, though. It made a lot of water, but really tasty water. I mean, you could, that's a soup right there. Even all that liquid in the pot is really tasty. And I end up, we didn't waste it. We end up just pouring it around the vegetables in our bowls. You know, got to have something to sop up, right? So there it is. Look at it. So pretty. Kind of messy. Absolutely awesome. What I did here was I ladled out some more of the juice so that you could see um, my layers. They held together. Just fine. Look there. Mm, I cannot wait for you to make this. I can't wait for you to write me a letter saying how wonderful I am and how thankful you are that I made this and showed you how to make it and that you and all that. I love you. You're welcome. I cannot wait for you to make this. Um, be sure to check out the homemade oil-free pasta sauce uh, video and then make this and then your family is going to love you. And I'll tell you what, you're really going to like it the next day because the next day, oh man, there's not enough. I mean, I might have to get a second Instapot and like double this recipe so there would be enough to be able to eat it the next day you know what I'm saying? because i could figure out i had two huge bowls of this stuff and then my husband had a big old bowl i stuffed myself and I, did i care no because when you're living and eating uh an oil-free whole food plant-based lifestyle you can have two bowls of stuff like this and it does not show up on you the next day it is awesome i love it i love it all right i'm gonna stop talking now so you can start writing down what you need on your grocery list the, uh, all the ingredients for this recipe are posted in the video description below, and you can also find them at the end of this video after I stop talking. Feel free to use all your own favorite pizza toppings. You don't have to use all the same vegetables I did. Just stick with the potatoes and stick with the tasty uh, homemade pasta sauce, and you can do, you know, from there, you can just go any which way you want to. I love y'all. I'll see you later. Bye.